Welcome back guys to our Android programming tutorial series on Toolbar. I'm Annie from Smart Herd. In this video, we will be learning about the implementation of Toolbar as Action Bar. You need not worry and confuse about using the Toolbar as Action Bar or the standalone Toolbar. There is not much difference in the codes. The XML file remains the same. The only changes that we need to make is in the Java file. Now let's switch to Android Studio and see what are the codes that are to be written and that are to be changed to use our toolbar as action bar. Now we had our application designed this way. On clicking the standalone toolbar button, we moved to the activity where we had written the codes to use toolbar as standalone toolbar. On clicking the toolbar as action bar, we jumped to the activity where the codes are written to use the toolbar as action bar. Now I have defined the action bar toolbar.java and made the basic setup of the codes as follows. The set content view r.layout activity toolbar. It is the same layout that we had used in the standalone toolbar. The layout of our application remaining the same. We have included the toolbar into the activity toolbar.xml because as I already said, the XML file has to remain the same. The only thing that is to be changed is the codes in the Java file. Now after defining the toolbar, we need to use the toolbar as action bar. To do that, we need to use the two functions as I have already said, the set support action bar method and the set action bar method. So let us implement it. Set action bar M toolbar. Now guys, we can see here is an error. It says set action bar that is android.widget.toolbar in activity cannot be applied to android.support.v7widget.toolbar. We have used the toolbar here that belongs to support.v7.widget.toolbar. Hence, we need to use the method set support action bar because the set action bar uses the toolbar that belongs to android.widget.toolbar. So let us change it to set support action bar. After defining the toolbar as action bar, now let us set the title and the subtitle for the toolbar. And here we go. We have used the set support action bar dot set title and define the title for our toolbar. Next thing we need to do is set the subtitle for our toolbar. Besides the title and the subtitle, like we had done in the standalone toolbar, we can also set the app icon, the logo, we can set the menu, the overflow icon, the hide overflow menu and many other things. I would like you to try it yourself and learn more about the toolbar implementation. Let us run our application and see if our toolbar is running as action bar or not and what changes has occurred. Although we cannot mark the difference between using the toolbar as action bar and the standalone toolbar. Since we have modified the codes in the activity toolbar.java, let us observe the toolbar used as action bar. Now on clicking the toolbar as action bar button, we move to the activity where the title is action bar toolbar and the subtitle is by smart herd. Now guys, we had set this primary text color as white in our previous tutorials in styles.xml. This is the white color which defines the text color of the toolbar title. As I said, the XML file remains the same. The only changes in the codes is in the Java file. Now guys, we need to inflate the menu items into our toolbar. So let us write codes for it. Now guys, to save the time, I have just overridden the method on create option menu where get inflator menu dot inflate inflates the main menu dot xml file. This menu main dot xml file has been defined in the menu folder. This function inflates the menu into our toolbar. Now we need to define the actions that has to be performed when the menu items are clicked. To do that, I have defined on options item selected method where the parameter passed is the menu item item. This item is the item that is being clicked in the menu. In the main menu.xml, like the standalone toolbar, 
all the icons and the menu items are same. There is no change at all. Now, instead of directly storing the title of the item into a string, I have used the switch case statements to demonstrate the action in a different way. The switch gets the ID of the item that is being selected. This ID is the ID that we have defined for the items in the menu main.xml. The ID is checked with the cases that are being defined in the switch. When the save icon is clicked, this variable which is of string type saves the string that I have defined in the values folder in strings.xml file. Here I have defined strings for each menu item which will be saved in the string variable while the switch statement is executed. For the save, the text is save, email, setting, camera, help, web search. Now let's move to action bar toolbar and see how it works. On clicking the mail icon, the string variable will store the string that is saved in the mail item. Same way with all other options. Now the message variable has been assigned with a particular string. After this, I have defined a toast message that will be seen when we click the menu item. So, let's run our application and see if our toolbar as action bar implementation is correct or not. Now, our application is up and running. On clicking the toolbar as action bar button, we see the menu items have been inflated into our toolbar. Now guys, we have already customized our toolbar and the overflow menu in the previous videos. Let's see what happens on clicking this icons. Save clicked. Settings clicked. This is how the toast message appears. On clicking the items in the overflow menu, the same happens. So that's all for this video guys. In the next videos, we will be learning about implementing the contextual menu into our toolbar. If you like the video, do share and leave your comment below the video. Subscribe to our channel and help us grow. I also have given the link for the source code of the entire module below in the description. You can go there and refer to it. That's all for this video. For further videos, stay tuned, keep smiling and have a good day.